What is your one all-time favorite Christmas song, hymn, Carol, for you makes Christmas Christmas? What is the one, one song that's your favorite? What do you got? Sure, no. Hallelujah. Which one? Hallelujah. Hallelujah from Hannah's Messiah? Sound. Yeah. Or just Hallelujah? <laughs> well, I like a specific version of it sometimes. Man, Paul, Fuller, Fuller. That Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I'm old fat. I'm getting older. All right. Silent Night. Silent Night. I'm pushing you. Ah, uh, Megan Cole's version of the Christmas song. You that old. I heard the bells. I heard the bells. Silent night. Silent night. We three kings. One little town of Bethlehem. Huh. Little drummer boy. What's yours? Little drummer boy. Are you just copying that? No. What are you, Lily? Silent night. Silent night. Silent night. Silent night. Do you have one? Which one? Little Dora Boy? All right. Tom. Oh, holy night. Oh, holy night. Nice. All good ones, right? Now, if I was pushed, if I had to pick a favorite, I couldn't just do one, but you can't either. <laughs> but I am more drawn to, I gravitate towards those celebratory, those big triumphant Christmas songs, like Joy to the World, um, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Uh, Angels We Have Heard on High, those are the songs I love at Christmas time. Make it Christmas, you know, those big, triumphant, celebratory songs where the organist can pull out all the stops and bang it away. And, and, and if you're lucky, you get a big trumpet fanfare with it, and crashing timpani, soaring crescendos, and it just makes your heart pump, right? I like the joy of the world. Oh, wow. you know, joy of the world, the Lord has come, uh, the earth receiver king, uh, every heart prepared in room, and Heaven and nature sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Uh, joyful all ye nations rise. And join the triumph of the skies. Angels we have heard on high sweetly singing over the plains. And the mountains in reply echo in their joyous strains. Gloria and excelsis Deo. Those are good songs. Those are the ones for me that makes Christmas feel like Christmas because, again, they're just uplifting, triumphant, celebratory. And I love them. Usually. <laughs> Typically. But this has been an unusual year. And, you know, they're playing them. And maybe it's a lack of snow or whatever. I don't know what it is, but they just seem off. And I think it's because, for me, this whole year has been off, right? And I just started driving down some thoughts. I mean, from the deadly pandemic, sheltering in place, distance learning, economic struggles, uh, impeachment of the president, remember that, back in January, February, the death of George Floyd leading to a global movement for racial justice, and then, of course, the ensuing protests, and some were riots, and some were looting, and the blatant racism, and then a contentious election. Airwaves and the internet were just filled uh, with hateful and dangerous political rhetoric. And then, of course, there's the death of Eddie Van Halen. I mean, Alex Trebek. Or both. This year, 2020, has experienced more than its fair share of world-shifting events. Unusual. Joy to the world, the Lord has come, that earth receive her king. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. In the joyous strains of glory and excelsis Deo, I don't know. Just don't sit well this year. I think it's because they stand in such sharp contrast to all the struggles and the fear and the anxiety and the stress and the strain that we've been kind of dealing with for the past year here. Everyone has been touched by it. And so for me, these songs 
just aren't doing it. <laughs> but then, I'm playing them anyway. <laughs> you know, don't get me wrong, I'm listening to them. But as I'm sitting here pondering and praying and playing this stuff, I heard a hymn, which I've heard millions of times, differently. It's a song that is not one of my favorites. Um, it's not one of the songs that I would play on repeat. It's not a song that I've got a favorite rendition of. It's actually a song that, you know, children sing the pageant, and if you're not paying attention, you might miss it. It's kind of drowned out by all the joyous strains of Joy of the World and Heart of the Heralds. It's a small little song that, you know, I just kind of dismiss, and it's cute and quaint, and it goes well with a, a children's Christmas pageant, but it's something that I've overlooked for 52 years until now. A little song which, surprisingly, one of you picked as your favorite. A little town of Bethlehem. I listened to it, and I have a newfound admiration and appreciation for this little song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Again, a throwaway for me. Not for Don. God bless you. Listen again to the first stanza. These haunting, for me, profound lyrics. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark streets shineth everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. What a contrast to joy of the world and the glory of Celsius Dale, right? The dark and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by, and in those dark streets shineth an everlasting light. And the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. But you, O Bethlehem, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. The hopes and fears of all the years, that's what the prophet Micah is writing about in this passage today. And that, to me, um, is to my mind, one of the most beautiful and theologically profound lyrics in any song I've ever, I mean, I appreciate I'm 52 years old and finally kind of hit me. These are some of the most theologically poignant lyrics in a Christmas hymn, or any hymn for that matter. And it speaks to something from old coming and coming again into the newness of time, hopes and fears, longing and fulfillment. So for Micah, the hopes and fears of all of the years culminated uh, in a time of devastation and confusion. For the country of Israel has been scattered to the winds because of the exile. They have been scattered all over. The temple's destroyed. It's gone. Their economy, their politics, in ruins. It's all done. It's all away. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Not scattered, but Reason some scary times. And Bethlehem, one of the little clans of Judah, a little town. For you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. And the people will return. They shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. From you, a little town, the ancient origin of Israel's great ruler, King David, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. All right? There's your context. Now let me ask you a question. What are some of your greatest hopes? What are some of your greatest hopes? Sure, I don't know. One great hope. World peace. World peace. This 
This isn't a beauty pageant, but good answer. All right, anything else? You hope well for your children. Other hopes. It's really obvious it starts clicking. How about life? How many of you would hope for a long, healthy, healthy yeah. life? Mm -hmm. Long, healthy, that's a great hope. How many of you would um, hope to be loved? How many of you would hope to be accepted, valued? How many of you hope to have purpose and meaning in your life? How many of you hope for joy? How about abundance? That's a good one too, right? Hopes. Those sound good? And, and I, I would wager that those hopes are common to every human being. Life, health, love, acceptance, purpose, meaning, joy, prosperity, hopes. All right? I ask you this one. What are some of your greatest fears? What are you afraid of? Just do the opposite list, right? Death. Illness. <laughs> Rejection, hatred, violence, emptiness, worthlessness, depression, sorrow, scarcity. That sounds like an accurate assessment of common fears. And I think the shared, the hopes and the fears are universal. They're shared among us and all people. So now listen to this again. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. You hear it? That's the gospel. That's the Christmas message. That in this little vulnerable, unassuming baby wrapped up in swaddling clothes, I don't know what swaddling means, but I'm sure it's with little blankies, right? And lying in, of all places, a manger in a stable, out in the countryside, in a small, unassuming little town called Bethlehem. There, in the unassuming parts of the dark world, with dark stars and dreamless sleeps, and dark streets, the eternal light comes. And there, all the hopes and the fears of all the years are met. We can sing of earth receiving our king. We can join the triumph of the skies. We can echo the joy of strains, but it's in the dark streets, the dreamless sleeps, beneath the silent stars, there are hopes and our fears that are met. That's Christmas. When God sent his son Jesus Christ into the world, he came to meet all of our hopes. Life, abundant and eternal. Love, unconditional. 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 You can't do anything. He loves you. Acceptance. You're a child of God. That's who you are. That's God's lavish love poured out on you. Purpose. Meaning. Value. You share in God's life, his love, and his work. <laughs> How cool is that? Purpose and meaning. And because you share in God's life and love and work, that's joy. Right? Because nothing can separate you from his love because of that baby. All the hopes are met in Jesus Christ. Right? And that's because he also came to address the fears. To meet the fears. Because, because of Jesus, death has lost its sting. Right? Separation has been repaired. In Christ, we are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. There's no longer Jew or Greek, uh, slave or free, male or female, because we are all one in Christ Jesus. There's no more separation or rejection. Hatred, violence, and rejection crumble in the presence of Jesus Christ's love expressed through the fruit of the Spirit, which is born out through you. <laughs> the 
hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. So 2020, if we're to have a theme song, I could think of nothing better than that song in that verse. That's what I think is so theologically poignant about this little phrase in this Christmas hymn, where the hopes and fears of all the years meet, becoming bound up with something so powerful that it's just ready to burst. That's where the divine is being born, the stillness of a deep and dreamless sleep, and silent stars go by. So in dark streets and dreamless sleeps, all of our hopes and all of our fears are met in the Christ child. That is good news. Amen? Amen.